Well, it's great to be able to spend some time with you again today, and I hope that you're taking your time going slowly through these sections of Romans and reading again, because my role is not to do your thinking for you. That would be really wrong. No, no. My part is to be here beside you to ask the question, to get you to start thinking more so that uh, throughout the day your mind will go back a little bit and forward to these same subjects. Now, where we come to today, if we see Romans like the, the journey and the climb, the analogy, I think we've come to a pretty steep bit on the mountain just right now. And it may well be that you're just about to say, I, I don't want to go any further. <laughs> I'd like to go back down. But the best bits are when you get through those hard climbs. I mean, I'm reminded um, of many years ago in 1977 when I went to Austria to be part of an IFES conference. And there, on one of the afternoons, sort of sports, recreational afternoons, I went on a walk up one of these mountains in Austria. Well, it came to the point where we were about 400 feet from the summit, and I was totally exhausted. And there was another, uh, an Austrian girl there, and uh, she and I sat down and I said, no, I think I'm, I'm done. It was a Scottish guy, and of course he said, oh, you'll have to go for Scotland and all, you know, he was all psyched up. And he says, come on, you'll do it for Ireland and all. I says, do you know what, I think I'll sit. But when I sat a few minutes with uh, Erica, her name was, uh, we both and said to each other, come on, let's do it, and let's get up to the top. We got to the top, and there was a book you could sign your name in, 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 a, in a little metal box, which we did. Now, it was really worth it to get to the top, but the interesting thing was that that day cemented a relationship with Erica that has lasted since 1977 and continues even today. We're in contact, our families, we visit each other. We've had a, a bond that has lasted. And, you know, some parts of Scripture are like that for me. If you really are prepared for the climb you will discover at the end of it that your relationship with the Lord will be bonded in an even deeper way. And so what we're doing here as we think of this, these two verses, I think we're on the climb here. So listen first. Verse 29 and 30. For whom he foreknew, he also foreordained to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And whom he foredained, these he also called. And whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. I ask the question, how far back can we see? Most of us can only see a short distance. Our memories don't hold very much, do they? Maybe they're triggered by sounds or tastes, maybe smells, or, or maybe it's just photographs. But when we begin to think about the story, well, let's call it the good story, because that's Romans 8, isn't it? Romans 8, especially 28, says the good, that all things work for good. When we think about the good story, where does that begin? Surely not where our memory begins. And often if I was to say to you, well, where does the good story of God in your life begun? You might say, well, uh, when I was a child, you know, I remember being in Sunday school or I remember my parents teaching me. Or maybe if you're like me, it's not even that early. It's a bit, little bit later on. And that's when the good story began. But no, if that's where it began, your confidence is tied to a lot of things that you did. And that could be very shaky in your mind at certain times. But when you come to Romans here, he tells us that it begins far, far sooner than that, way back in the eternity and in the mind of God eternally. Those he foreknew, he also foreordained. Foreknowledge. Listen to what that sounds like. Jeremiah 1.5, God says of Jeremiah, Before I formed you in the womb, yes, before I knew you, Wow. That is a lot to say, even today in all of this abortion debate, hasn't it? That every life, even before formed, God knows. Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.19, the Lord knows those who are his. And this term that is used for foreknowledge is the term prognosis. It's an everyday medical language. We all know it now. We're all Greek scholars, at least in one word. 
It means God's active delight in his choice. That's what it means. He actively delights in this choice. Those he foreknows, he foreordains. And foreknowledge and foreordination are really one and the same. And God is delighted to be able to ordain you to be one of his children. Jim Packer calls this the family secret of the children of God. And it's really lovely. And it's a wonderful, most reassuring truth. It's a little bit like that statement, you know, in Mastermind. If you've ever watched Mastermind, I began so I finish, you know, so that you get your extra little bit of time. But what it's really saying is God says, I have made this choice in eternity and as a consequence of my choosing, certain things will then happen. It's like a chain reaction. They will all happen. There's great hope and there's great confidence that what God begins, he completes. Paul puts it a little bit like this, doesn't he? In Philippians 1, 6, he says, He who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And of course, sometimes that helps you and I to discover and explain and understand the struggle. He has begun a good work. He hasn't completed it yet. And you're sometimes saying, oh, look at this struggle. I just wrestle with all these issues. I feel as though I'm still a baby Christian after 40 years. It's okay. God's going to be working on your heart and he will complete that work, but he's still working. So here's a couple of questions came to me. One is, do you ever wonder, can I really be sure that I'm a Christian? Well, this truth, this teaching, is one of the most wonderful teachings to help reassure you because the fruits of salvation are repentance and faith. Those are the key fruits The fact that you have been able to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that is an evidence to you that you have been called and chosen. That's an evidence to you that whenever what God has begun in your life, he's going to complete in your life. Even on the days when you don't feel it, it's not your feelings, and your feelings will fluctuate as life goes on with all sorts of other reasons and impacts. But it also, secondly, does this not create questions and mystery? It does. Yes, but but like so many things we see and experience, we see and experience only a part of them. But the part we do experience is real. So you and I, we encounter all sorts of situations in our life for which we can only really know that part maybe. We don't know all the other parts, but that doesn't make the part we do know to be any less real. And in this case, the rest shall be unfolded further. You see, mystery does exist, but then why not? Because we're dealing with the eternal mind of an eternal God. Well, our concerns, of course, for others are very good, even when they have no concern for themselves. And it's often in the, at this point that people become very annoyed and they say, but, but what about all of those other people? I say, that's great that you're concerned for them. Although I do question sometimes how concerned people are because it doesn't always follow that they're going to go and try to win their souls. I well remember being at the side of the bed of dying people in over the last 30, 40 years of ministry, really seeking to help people and asking, can I pray with you? Having people tell me in no uncertain terms, go away, I want nothing to do with your prayers. I want nothing to do with your God. Do you know, that rejection was so profound and clear. It just brings a lot of this truth home to me. I mean, this, this is how God maybe gives people what they want. They don't want him, and so he gives them over, and their hearts are hardened. But, as Jim Packer says, we should view everyone we meet as possibly being numbered among those foreknown and foreordained to be called and one day glorified. So do not give up on people. It's not for you and I to play God. It's for you and I to be his ambassadors, to seek to win every person to Christ and to seek to lead every person to Christ and to help people see this amazing truth of this amazing God who delights in choosing and rescuing and pointing them to the evidence of that in the Lord Jesus Christ who has died, given himself As it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son 
You cannot accuse God of being unjust in the face of that picture. So be assured today, God is at work in your heart as you trust in him. One day you will not recognize all God's children when they're glorified, including yourself. Oh wow, praise his name for this.